But now I'm delighted to be joined um, by Alka Siegel Cuthbert, the author and director of Don't Divide Us. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Isn't it important in terms of not dividing us that people should be appointed on merit? And that if people aren't appointed on merit, it's actually dispiriting for those who are appointed because they feel they're getting it as a pat on the head. It's rather condescending. Yes, I think it is very patronising. Um, I don't think either women or black people need white people to vacate spaces for them. I think we're quite capable of entering the field on our own merits. But I think the thing about um, uh, Madame Blanc, Amanda Blanc, is when I was reading the story, she reminded me is nothing so much as a kind of aristocratic patronage, a sort of lady noblesse oblige, a sort of saying, well, look, these people do not please me. If they're going to come into the inner sanctum of Aviva, they have to, you know, win my approval first. So in a way, she's, she's actually replicating the kind of cronyism she claims to be fighting against. She says she's, she's doing this to try and um, counter, you know, um, somebody giving a job for their mate, phoning somebody up whom they know, but without any evidence, no idea if that actually goes on. But even if, um, even if that it is, even if there are problems in their HR recruitment procedure, I don't think coming on like this is, is the way to, to deal with those problems. This is just, um, it's very patronising. It's also a way of really, um, you look at the, in the article, from what I can tell, there's sexual harassment, which is one thing, that is criminal and has to be dealt with through, through the law and through proper procedures of discipline. But then there's language. You know, I think, I believe one of the things she says um, that she had to suffer at the FTSE 100 AGM last year was overhearing a comment like, she's not the right man for the job. Now, boorish, offensive, maybe, but harassment, I don't think so. I really don't think so. so it's a way of chilling workplace speech almost disciplining the workforce, really. Also, after this staff, where she wants to discriminate against white men, it's perfectly reasonable. She thinks she's not the right person for the job. I mean, if all it is is the one word, people in public life must expect criticism. If they think they're so precious yeah. that people who aren't getting the service they expect from her because she's wasting her time on this, not making money as the head of an insurance company, which is her job, mm. surely it's fair enough to say she's not up to it. Well, I certainly, I, I would be asking questions for sure if I had anything to do with Aviva. And, and I think it's, um, you know, this is a woman who's made her way to chief executive of a huge business of over 22,000 employees. She's obviously got something about her, right? She hasn't got there through, um, she, has, she herself hasn't got, she's probably had to struggle and fight. So, but yet she's quite prepared to use this sort of rhetoric of vulnerability and therapeutic well-being that really is anything but. It is just a way of stigmatising speech, really, that, that a certain class find offensive. Do you think there's ever a case for positive discrimination? Um, well, I think very, very... Uh, I wouldn't say never, but I think in today's context of Britain today, you would have to have a very high bar of evidence, I think, to show that um, the disparity was actually due to racism. It's actually, you know, rather than, um, you know, the effect of multiple variables coming to And it. is it fair to do things, if you are a firm that is entirely white male, to make efforts to get people from different backgrounds to apply for jobs? That's, that would be reasonable, try and advertise in places, course, to have outreach yes. and things like that. That's, that's reasonable. I mean, I think there have been tremendous developments in HR processes over the past period, modern period. You know, there's, there's something to be said for bureaucracy and bureaucratic procedures when they're done properly because they're the basis of institutional meritocracy. Um, that should be in place. I can't imagine a company like Aviva doesn't have that in place. place. And changes in societal expectations. I think as late as 1974, if you work in the Foreign Office and you married as a woman, you had to retire. And all those sorts of things, quite rightly, have been, been swept away. Yes. But it becomes more difficult, doesn't it, when that tips over into saying somebody who is the best qualified for the job, you can't have it because you're a white man. Well, as far as I can see, it's discrimination. I mean, to treat 
to treat, I mean, that is in the Equality Act, to treat somebody, to set a, um, an extra criteria of selection on the basis of purely sex, which is a protected characteristic, yes. or ethnicity, skin colour, another protected characteristic, is discrimination. And one of the things I think is that you get good decision making when you have good people who will come from a variety of backgrounds. You don't want groupthink, that that leads to boring decision making, unadventurous decision making, continuing to do things as you've always done them. You need challenge, and that often benefits from variety, but variety through excellence. You need excellence. You also need um, a workplace culture of relatively high degree of freedom and trust because you can have excellent people there but if everybody's walking on eggshells and scared to talk openly you, those ideas are not going to come to well, fruition. That's such a good point. We often talk about um, freedom of speech but thank you very much Alka.